um, okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Zareen Kiran. I'm assistant professor from Dow University of Health Sciences. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the overview of complications of diabetes uh, in a very simple manner. Let's move on. So this year, the theme of the World Diabetes Day has been uh, nurses make the difference. That means nurses have a lot, lot of role in managing diabetes and uh, they are an essential part of the multidisciplinary team. Uh, keeping this theme in mind, when we talk about the uh, number of uh, people who have been affected worldwide with diabetes as per the latest IDF in um, 2019 uh, review, in fact, 2020 uh, review, they have clearly explained how the burden of diabetes is increasing with the passage of time in several parts of the world, especially those uh, near, no, those in the uh, Middle East and North Africa, where you can see that, um, I'm not sure if the laser pointer is uh, being seen on the screen. So you can see that the number is rising tremendously. And if you compare it from Europe and Southeast Asia and Western Pacific, uh, Western Pacific uh, a number is alarmingly uh, on the high from Middle East and North African region, where my country, that is Pakistan, uh, is supposed to belong to. So uh, moving on, IDF Atlas also says, um, highlights the issues behind this uh, overgrowing and you know uh, out of control um, pandemic of diabetes developing all over the world. Um, uh, the, just uh, several people, uh, several million people are, sorry, uh, are actually uh, affected by the year 2045. You can see how the figure would will rise, will actually double from 55 million to 108. And every one in eight adult would be diabetic, is diabetic right now, would then be, oh, every one in four would be affected. And if we move, uh, if we further talk about the, uh, the, the complications, the disease of diabetes itself, uh, if one in life births will be affected by hyperglycemia and pregnancy. Even the pregnant female, pregnant population has to do a lot with, and, and as a part of this pandemic. Um, at present, from the last year's data, unfortunately, Pakistan is on the top of this Middle East and North African region. Um, being having 19.4 million people in Pakistan being affected by diabetes. That's something very, very alarming and sad to hear, actually. And now, um, as diabetic, diabetes is, uh, is not only the number of games, and it has a lot to do with the multiple comorbidities and complications to deal with and where multidisciplinary teams have to work, so as I told to keep the, the role of nurses in mind, here is where they have to uh, really play their part. And as you can see, um, several organs of the body, right? If we talk about from the top, that is the brain, uh, where you can have stroke, then coming down to heart, uh, if someone can you know, get affected from heart attack. And then there are peripheral artery disease, the kidneys, the eyes, and eyes getting affected through several ways. And of course, the diabetic foot, one cannot ignore that problem, especially in our region. Um, in, in all these, in, in these areas, nurses have a lot to educate to the, to the, to the person with diabetes because uh, we being diabetologists or endocrinologists have to uh, tell them about the numbers, have to run after those numbers, but the nurses have to, you know, uh, explain how to prevent these complications and educate them about um, uh, how to combat them when they come. So one by one, you can very well see the in, uh, how the diagram on the left side of the screen is telling you um, that how these uh, organs are affected in diabetes. But the, the picture on the right uh, so well explains that when a person gets affected from stroke, he or she is not able to even lift his own hand and need support. And of course, the presence of diabetic foot ulcers are, are, are a dilemma on, on their own. 
coming starting with kidney disease this is the normal healthy glomeruli in the kidney where uh, the the filtration of the blood takes place and urine formation normally takes place and you can see it's quite healthy with well formed or bones capsule and glomerulus inside uh, and then the picture on the right is a bit shabby shabby kind of a filtration process where proteins get leaked easily into the urine uh, in, into the convoluted uh, into the collecting tube and when this happens the kidney becomes sick and uh, if compare the diabetic kidney from the healthy kidney the size get reduced the function is quite much reduced because of the size as well as from the scarring process taking place and ultimately patient has to land up with um, in with the dialysis procedures uh, this is a picture telling you that so uh, prevention is better than cure. That's what the uh, written here in our Urdu language. That parhez ilaj se behtar hai. Diabetic kidney disease. For that, you should go for screening at least once a year. And how do you do that? You assess urinary albumin or spot urine microalbumin creatinine ratio. And number two is estimated GFR, that is glomerular filtration. These are very simple tests which you can ask your physician every year to get them done and see if you have any start of the diabetic kidney disease process. And how to treat that? Simple, optimize the glucose control and optimize the blood pressure. At, at, at every office or physician visit, you can simply ask them to see if, if these are on the right track. Uh, and then further on, if person has developed diabetic kidney disease anyway, and need support for that, how to manage that, then hemodialysis and ultimately renal replacement in the form of renal transplant is a very good option. Moving on to the next organ, very important, that is the normal retina in our body. This is the fundoscopic picture, which shows how the normal blood uh, vessels inside our retina looks like. And tell you one thing, this is one place in the whole body where through the, uh, uh, you know, through an instrument, you are able to see the vessels inside the whole body of that particular patient. It is giving you the picture of the vessels in running in the whole body. So this is just like an, uh, uh, an opening to the uh, vasculature and opening towards the, uh, the normal vasculature of the diabetic patient or any patient actually. So these are the normal blood vessels flowing out from the optic desk and telling you that the retina is quite clear. But here you can see this is uh, diabetic retinopathy where diabetic patient develops uh, several abnormalities on the diabetic retina, uh, on, the, on the retina of the diabetic eye disease, eye, eye person, a diabetic, diabetic eye. And here uh, you can see microaneurysms, exudates. And in fact, the retina is detached. And here again, you can see retinal detachment this means the site is threat to get, uh, you know, permanently lost. So again, prevention better than cure screening. Initial dilated and comprehensive eye examination by an ophthalmologist is warranted for all, all diabetic patients at the time of their diagnosis when they first visit you or every two years or even earlier if there are symptoms or other problems patient complains of. And the importance of diabetic retinopathy is very much, uh, you know, important, uh, very much to, to be concerned in case of pregnant patients. In pregnancy, the, the complication of diabetic retinopathy is more uh, as compared to the normal uh, non-pregnant population. So women with the pre-existing diabetes who are planning to get pregnant or have become pregnant, they first of all should receive a preconception counseling that get your eyes checked before get your sugars checked, blood pressure checked, and get yourself fit to, to plan a pregnancy. And uh, if they do become pregnant, then make sure that uh, their eyes are examined uh, just before pregnancy or even at, in, in first trimester, and then at, in every trimester afterwards throughout the pregnancy, and for one year postpartum, that means after even after delivering their babies, they have to get in touch with the um, ophthalmologist or eye, eye specialist for up to one year because there is a risk of you know, worsening or progression of diabetic uh, retinopathy in such uh, population. 
And the, the goal of treatment or the key treatment principles are the same to optimize the, optimize the blood glucose, uh, the blood pressure, and, and if required, go for a laser treatment. And there are several options for that. And then intravitreal VEGF injection on, and there's still advanced type of, uh, you know, intravitreal treatment modalities coming up. Uh, moving on to the next complication, that is diabetic neuropathy and diabetic foot. The picture is so self-explanatory. You can see here on the left of the screen that there's an ulcer on the bottom of the, uh, on the sole of the foot. And the, if you see the, the area where it is affected is a pressure area, that is the first metatarsal head. And the ulcer is quite deep. If you classify, it's going bone deep, really. And here is the risk of, you know, getting an infection of the bone. And if the bones get infected, um, the surgeon may decide to amputate, that is to cut this part of the foot. Um, and this is this uh, the next picture tells you how the amputated foot looks like. And this is a kind of an ulcer which is developed on the top of the of the toe. And this is more of the vascular uh, insufficiency type where the blood flow to the to the toes are compromised. Uh, moving on. So how do you prevent that? And foot care becomes of so much prime importance in every um, at least annual visit of a diabetic patient to their diabetologist. That uh, these are very simple. There are very simple ways, methods, and tools you can say which help you know a screen if there are any complications of neuropathy or vasculopathy in a particular diabetic patient's foot. And here you can see this is a monofilament which can tell you if the sensations, light touch sensations are intact or not. And these are the pressure area points which are um, you know, recommended by the American Diabetic Association. Uh, you can adopt other um, uh, guidelines and recommendations for that too. But you should know this is something very sensitive which can be done in office setting anyway very easily. And the treatment is optimization of glucose control, the key point and uh, and if, recall, if there are, there is a pain or burning sensation, symptomatology in the foot, then go for medicines like pregabalin or duloxetine. Uh, however, we have no medicines for numbness or loss of sensation because these are negative symptoms, and uh, a patient is often not, not aware of such symptoms, and uh, and and one cannot do much about them, but uh, only to you know have more protection and have more um, care otherwise of the foot. So lastly, but not the least, uh, the patient education remains uh, on the top. And here again, uh, she may be not uh, even a qualified nurse who is giving this information to this lady in, in our rural setup, but she's educated enough to tell you how to self-manage your diabetes and how to look for uh, the, uh, the forthcoming complications, if any, and where to, to direct yourself. So, so the, the nurses is just a word, but I think the diabetes, the diabetic education um, is, is a concern of the whole team. And here is, uh, here, this is the, this is the reason why they, this is the theme we have this year, which should be implemented in all our healthcare setups. So thank you very much.